Hey guys, I'm Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to take a look at the Siglent SVA1015X. I got this several months ago, and this is kind of a combination spectrum analyzer as well as a VNA. Now, up front, it is not a full VNA. It does not have two port measurements available in it. A full VNA is about four or five thousand dollars for a used one that's 20 or 30 years old and a brand new one is five digits of thousands so this is not that however this does combine the functionality of a spectrum analyzer with a vna and some other features that it has as well that i'm not familiar with yet but i'm learning how to use it so i kind of wanted to demonstrate what all this thing will do for me and and how it applies to what we do in amateur radio so with that, let's get started and take a look at it. Okay, well, let's jump in real quick and take a look at some of the functions of this. The first thing it does here is, as you can see, spectrum analyzer. This works like my old spectrum analyzer. This works very similar to a tiny SA, um, bigger screen, obviously, and better gear than a tiny SA. So spectrum analyzer, this has a range of nine kilohertz up to 1.5 gigahertz that we can sweep in any portion of that. Um, at any bandwidth resolution. So it's a spectrum analyzer and it's, you know, works just fine. The difference is on this versus a tiny SA, this has more range and better dynamic range than a tiny SA is going to have. The Smoke and Ape has done a ton of videos on tiny SAs. If you're interested in those, you should go watch the Smoke and Ape. Now, if I hit the mode button, you can see that we have other functionality available. So we have our spectrum analyzer, which we've just looked at. We have a VNA vector network analyzer. We have distance to fault modulation analyzer and EMI measurement. Now I'll be honest with you. I'm not familiar with how to use the modulation analyzer and the EMI measurement exactly yet. So we'll kind of gloss through those really quick. So the distance to fault is interesting. If we jump over to that, Okay, so we're in the distance to fault mode, and I've got this set up already because it involves doing a calibration every time, depending on the parameters you use for this test. And you can see here that we have um, 145.25 feet of cable. Now, this measurement is not exact because, for one, I'm using a jumper that is not RG213, and it's about six feet long but that's in the neighborhood of about how much cable I have. And what I did is I disconnected the uh, PL259 from the DX Commander. So my connector is literally laying in the grass, not connected to anything at this point. So that's one of the functions that this does. And that's pretty cool. There's um, a fair amount of setup to do this. You need to do a calibration based on the size of the sweep you're doing and you have to calibrate it for the particular sweep. And you can see the calibration is up here in this upper left-hand corner up here that says we are corrected for the range that we're sweeping, the frequency range. And this shows us the where we're seeing an error in the cable at this point. So if I ran this test and I saw a number that was less than what I'm pretty sure is the correct distance of cable length, then I would know I have a break in the cable or a short or s something like that, which is pretty cool for doing this kind of testing. And one last thing here before we switch over and change modes, I have moved the device from the DX Commander connection. I have a window pass through. You can't see it. It's behind the camera. And I moved the SVA connection from the window pass through DX Commander connection over to my 10 meter J pole, which is kind of in the front yard and my wife can't see it. So do not tell her. I didn't change any parameters on the device here. I just literally changed the connector that the device was fastened to. And you can see we've changed our peak distance here from 145 and some change to 26 and some change, which is about right. That's, that's pretty much spot on. Now that cable is RG8X and I don't know what the attenuation is exactly per foot, but without modifying it, we are in the ballpark the exact amount of cable. Now, the thing is, you've got an antenna on the end of it, so that is affecting this measurement, all right? So 26 is close. So if we go into mode, 
again. We're going to look at the modulation analyzer. It does a lot of things that I do not understand yet. It does not do sideband modulation. It does, as you can see up here, quite a list of modulations. I have not played with this function at all because it's not something I'm going to do on a regular basis, but it's there. And at some point I will tinker with it and I will figure out how to use it and I'll do a video on it, absolutely. So that's that function. The next thing I wanted to share was if we go to mode once again, we can go to EMI measurements, have zero idea how this all works yet. This is something I'm going to have to tinker with as well. This is what it's receiving off of the uh, input on the, on the SVA. We're hooked to the output of the VNA right now. So, and by the way, I think I've said VNA and SVA in here. In the case of this video, it's the same thing, okay? This is a SVA 1015, so it's like a Spectrum VNA. It's not a full VNA, but it's ham-related part of the VNA. So if I use those words interchangeably, just please don't correct me in the comments. It'll hurt my feelings. This does EMI measurements, electromagnetic interference. This is not something I have any experience with, so I will have to figure out how to use this functionality. The next thing that we can look at, and finally, the one that I wanted to really share a little bit more of, is the vector network analyzer functionality. So this is the typical VNA setup. All of this can be driven from the screen here. It's a touch screen, the buttons on the device itself right down here, or through the web interface, and all that is for this device. You can also use the uh, Easy Spectrum software that Siglent provides, as well as this will integrate with the NIVISA suite of test and management software. We're going to do some measurements. This is connected to my 10 meter J pole out front. We want to set our measurement parameters. So we're going to set our frequency range for part of the 10 meter band. So the 10 meter band, well, actually, let's just do all of the 10 meter band. The 10 meter band goes from 28 megahertz all the way over to, I'm looking at a chart, to 29.7. So let's set our range on this guy to those numbers. <laughs> so let's see, our start is gonna be 28 megahertz and our stop is gonna be 29.7 megahertz. So now we are sweeping the 10 meter band. The 10 meter band is large and I have no idea how good my J pole actually is. Um, it works well for FT8. It doesn't work so well for voice. So it's a little, it's really oriented down toward the data portion of the 10 meter band. I need to make another one and set it up for voice. Um, I can tune it into submission, but it's still not very good. So as you can see here, we have our span of 1.7 megahertz. We have 201 data points. Let's crank that up to 800 data points because we can. On this device versus a nano VNA, this is a hella faster than a nano VNA is for sweeping. So if I want to go up to 1,000 data points, boom, it's reswept it. If you do this on a nano, it'll, it'll crawl, absolutely crawl. So if we go back, we've set our stimulus. We're going to do an S11 measurement. And that's, you have that choice here, S11 or S21. All right, the purple trace is my SWR sweep. And then the marker out here is our Smith chart. And we'll look at it more in a second. I think I need to tweak a button on it. But there is our SWR sweep of our 10 meter J pole. And you can see down here at the bottom end, we're about a 1.5 SWR. And as we go across the band, it goes up to super crappy. Uh, it's the first time I made a J pole, mistakes were made. But it works well at uh, FT8 frequencies, which is about all I do on 10 meters. That is what the purple trace is showing is our SWR. Now, if we go and we change traces. Okay, so I've got our measurements set up now. We're doing two S11 measurements here, one displaying on a Smith chart and one an SWR sweep. I lowered the range on this from 28 to 29 megahertz. I don't typically use that much of the 10 meter band anyway. So here is our purple line as our sweep, uh, our SWR response for our frequency range, 28 to 29. And you can see we're down here on the bottom about 1.4 or 1.5. I could set a marker on that. So let's do that. 
So we need to change our trace and we're gonna select trace two and then we're gonna go to marker and drag that guy down. And you can see the marker on the Smith chart moves to correlate to the marker on the SWR. So as I move the marker on the purple line, the SWR response, it moves the corresponding marker one on our Smith chart results. So down here at 28, 28 megahertz, we have an SWR. Oh, there it is. It's in the upper right corner. 1.38 is our SWR. And as I move the marker up the band, you can see up here in the top right corner, the purple number is changing. And that is our SWR as I move up the 10 meter band. All right. And up to about 29, uh, let's see, 28, 9, 8, 9, 7. I'm under three. So it's good enough for ham for me. Works fine. I've got a tuner. I can fix that easy enough. And most radios can tune three to one. But again, what's interesting is as I move this, you can see the parameters on the Smith chart change. That's the yellow up top. This does all the S11 and S21 functions. I'm not going to go through all those. This video is already way too long. You've got a VNA. As I said, this does all the spectrum analyzer stuff. So we can generate a signal. We can run it through out to an antenna, get SWR. We can look at all the parameters of our antenna, reactants, inductance, capacitance, so on and so forth. Here I've added a third trace, the blue line, the cyan, whatever color you want to call it. And what this is showing us is our reflection coefficient. So you can add multiple traces, I think up to six or eight traces on this particular device. So you can look at multiple parameters at one time. Okay, guys, that's about it for this video. This wasn't really intended to be a tutorial on how to use this device. This was just sharing with you guys some of the stuff that it can do. Is it necessary for your ham journey? No, probably not. Everything you do, you can probably do with a nano VNA and a tiny SA, but I happen to like gadgets. What can I say? Gentlemen, ladies, that is all I have for today. 73, y'all have a good one.